Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a first look at Home Assistant and also we're going to be configuring Samba Share. Okay, it's occurred to me that we've done some videos about Home Assistant and mostly how to get up and running with it. Uh, we've also done integration of the IKEA Trad Free Light System but we haven't taken the time to have a look at the interface itself and um, that's what we're going to do in this video as well as setting up a Samba share or using the configurator add-on as these are what you're going to need to get started with Home Assistant. So this is the uh, landing page that you get when you go on to Home Assistant uh, or the home page as they call it. Once we start adding things to Home Assistant, this is where your entities or your devices are going to show. You can also set these up into zones. You can have your automations on here. It might become a little bit clearer once we uh, get going. You get this welcome box when you boot up for the first few times. And we can go to the integrations page. Now on here, if you have anything on your network that is automatically... Um, automatically sensed by Home Assistant, for example, IKEA Trad Free Gateways, uh, Roku's Google Google Chromecasts, things like that. These will show up here. I don't have anything like that on the network that I'm using for this tutorial. You can also get that um, by going to the bell icon, and if there's anything that it's sensing that you've not got set up, it'll notify you in here. Uh, these three bars up here just hide away the menu at the side there. That can be quite handy once you start to populate the screen and you've got a lot of information on here. Uh, moving down, you've got the map. This is uh, once you've got GPS set up on your devices, it'll, you can do stuff like GPS tracking of your devices. So you can say when you're so far away from home or when you enter the home zone, you could... Boil, boil the smart kettle. Um, so this is what uh, the map is used for. In logbook here you can see there's not much in here at the moment because this is a fresh install of Home Assistant but this will give you the log of what's been going on with your system. Uh, history will give you the history of the devices or entities that you have so you can see what your usage of certain devices or certain automations is. Going further down here to has.io, this is your add-on screen. So once you've got add-ons or apps up and running on Home Assistant, they will show in here. As you can see, we don't have any running at the moment because again, this is a fresh install. Going along the top here, we also have uh, snapshots. So this is where you can take a, a backup of your system so you could uh, if anything was to go wrong or you were to break it somehow, you can use the snapshot that you've taken to to back the system up or to restore the system. Add-on store. This is where we find all of our add-ons or apps that we can use within Home Assistant. Uh, you can also add a new repository here, which will give you more add-ons and more options. Um, there's quite a lot in here already, just on the standard one, and we'll come back and have a look at some of these in a minute, um, particularly this Samba share. Okay, moving along to system, you have a few options in here. You also have the system log, and this is where we can reboot or shut down our, our Raspberry Pi as well. Moving down to configuration, you have this option here, which is the Home Assistant Cloud. You use this if you want to integrate your Home Assistant with your uh, Alexa or Google Home Assistants. You have integration, so integrated devices. Again, you can see you've got nothing in there at the moment. Users, you can add users to your account. This is the default ones here, and this is the one that you set up during um, the first screen uh, set up when you boot into your Pi for the first time. Uh, we have the general tab here. This comes up with uh, some information about where we are, what our location is. We also have this configuration validation tool. 
In order to make a lot of changes in Home Assistant, we have to play with what's called a configuration.yaml file, which we'll have a closer look at later on. Um, we have to check that our configuration.yaml file is valid before we restart Home Assistant. If there is any errors in the configuration.yaml file, we risk our Home Assistant uh, instance not booting and we're left with some recovery options or to start again with a fresh install. So we can check our configuration here. We can see on this occasion our configuration is valid because we've made no changes to the configuration.yaml file. That felt like a lot of words to say at once, but it will make sense when we start to look at um, how we can integrate and how we can add devices to Home Assistant. Okay, go back to configuration. Uh, persons here, we can add uh, devices for GPS tracking. Uh, entity register, so we've got nothing in there at the moment, um, apart from me, because that's set up by default. Uh, but this is where we can, um, you know, see all the entities or devices that we have attached. The area registry, so you can split your home into areas um, and, you know, automate devices in a certain area rather than the devices individually. Again, we have nothing set up there. Automations, we will have a look at. In fact, we did have a little look at in the IKEA Lights video. And then we've got scripts and customizations in here as well. The only other things that we've got uh, in here is this little button here that looks kind of like a remote control, which says services. So in here, you can trigger services or automations manually. Uh, this can be quite good when setting up automations or when troubleshooting when things aren't quite going the way they should. And here we've got the statuses. Um, we can pick an entity to get more information or set the state of an entity. But the most useful thing on this screen is uh, the current entities here. This will show all of the entities that we have in our system, the name of the entity, the current state of it, and the attributes of the entity as well. Again, the reason why this is handy will make more sense in future videos when we're looking to add functionality to Home Assistant. So one thing that we're, we're going to look at now is I already mentioned that you have to get into your configuration.yaml um, file in order to make changes within Home Assistant. And there's two main ways of doing that. We can either use what's called a Samba share. Now Samba is the protocol that Windows uses to share files across the network. So if we go down here and just very quickly go to not that, uh, network here, you can see that we get shown all of the devices on our network here. And you can see I've already got Hass.io which is the Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. However, we're gonna delete that configuration and show you how to set that up. Um, so the protocol that all of these other devices use to talk to Windows is Samba. So let's go ahead and set that up inside Home Assistant. So we're gonna to go to the Hass.io tab and go to add on store and scroll down until we find a Samba share. Now, when you're adding an add-on or an app in Home Assistant, each page has a link. If you click on that link, it will take you to the Home Assistant page that has more information about that add-on, as well as some configuration. So we'll go ahead and click on install. These installs are normally quite quick. Um, so hopefully I won't have to cut any of the video out and we can just wait here for this for a moment. Okay, now the package is installed, we can see we've got a few options here. We can uninstall it, we can start the add-on running, which we're not going to do yet. This is our configuration for the add-on, and we get the log, which is currently empty. We do want to make sure that we've got start on boot, so if when we reboot our Raspberry Pi, the Samba add-on is going to, share, uh, going to start automatically. Um, 
auto update is off by default. I tend to just leave this off so I've got a bit more control over the versions of things that I'm running. Okay, down in configuration, work group. If you haven't set up a work group on your home network, a Windows uh, work group, then just leave this as default. If you have a work group set up, then you'll know what that is and just enter whatever the name of your work group is in here. Okay, our username is going to be whatever we want um, our username to be when we want to log in to Hasio from a Windows machine. So on this occasion, I'm just going to use my first name and password here. If you leave this as null, there'll be no password here. However, we are going to add a password and what we need to do is when we delete this, we see the text goes red. That means there's something wrong with this configuration. Now, if we just go ahead and type our password in, you can see it remains red. That's because this has to be in quotations for this to work. So make sure you put those quotations in and go ahead and click save. And once we've hit save, we can click start. And we'll give this a second to think about it. Okay, and we can see that that's now the service started and up and running. So if we refresh the log there, we can see that all sorts of stuff, stuff is happening uh, there. So if we jump back over to our file explorer in Windows and go to our network, and then we're going to go and click on HASIO. Okay, you see I got an error message there. Um, it, it does that sometimes. I'm not quite sure why. Um, I did have to uh, cut the video there. You, you guys might have noticed that I was having some problems with my uh, configuration. Uh, everything I've done here in HASIO is correct and still stands. The problem was with my network, um, but I've resolved that now. All right, guys, one thing that I did just want to quickly add on here in the configuration in the Samba file, uh, sorry, in the Samba add-on, in interfaces, you have to add the interface uh, which you're using to connect your Raspberry Pi to the network. So if you're using a wired connection, it's ETH0. So if you're using the Ethernet connection, ETH0. If you're using the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi that we showed how to set up in a previous video, here you would put WLAN0. Okay, WLAN0. Click save, restart it, and you should have no problems. Um, so looking in the HASIO folder here, we've got a few things. The main thing we're going to look at here is configuration or config. And here we can see we've got this configuration.yaml folder, a YAML file. Now you can edit this in Notepad, but I would say do yourself a favor and get Notepad++. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Um, it's a, just a much better bit of software. So we are going to right click on it and edit with Notepad++. And you can see this opens up here and this is our uh, bare bones configuration.yaml file. We're not going to do anything in here just now. I just want to show you how to get into here because in future videos, a lot of the editing uh, of HASIO that we're going to do, a lot of adding automations and entities and so on is going to be done um, via the configuration.yaml file. The other option you have uh, for a config uh, to get into your configuration.yaml file is if we go back to HASIO and you can see now on this dashboard screen we have the Samba share here because that's up and running now. We go back to add-ons and we're going to look for configurator and we can install this. What this is going to allow us to do is to get into all of our configuration files, including that configuration.yaml file from within the web browser. So we'll just give this a second to load. I might well cut here if this is taking a while.
Okay, now the configurator has installed, we just go ahead and click start. Okay, once the service is started, you will get this button here that says Open Web UI. We'll just go ahead and click on that. And this will take us into the web configurator. So we can click on the folder at the top here and we can browse through the folders and you can see here we've got this configuration.yaml file again and we can click on that and we get into the same configuration.yaml file but this time inside the web browser. So we can edit the configuration.yaml file in here. I don't know why but I'm not a huge fan of this. Um, it just seems um, a, bit, a bit better, a bit more intuitive to do it via the Samba share, although that can be, um, it can't, it's not the most reliable thing in the world I've found the Samba share. Um, it works kind of nine times out of ten, but sometimes you can't get into it and you have to kind of restart the uh, Samba add-on. So it's nice to have this installed as well as a little bit of a backup if you're just trying to quickly change something. So I'd say have a go at using both while you follow on in my further tutorials and just decide which one you like for yourself. And that's, uh, that's all for this video today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, as always. Uh, please do go ahead and subscribe if you found this useful or entertaining at all. Subscriptions really do help the channel. Um, so please go ahead and do that if you can. And also like and comment.